So we start off with April and Omarion and Omarion's mother. And it's pretty clear that the three of them are in a better place. April and Leslie are in a better place. They can talk about situations and everything like that. So when we really get into the, the, the meat and you know, the meat and potatoes of the situation between April and Leslie. The the real reason why April wanted Leslie's approval so bad is because she grew up without her mother. Her mother shipped her off to her grandmother when she was young and then she moved back in with her mother when she was 11 years old. April has never really felt like her mother loved her and she never felt like she was worthy of her mother's love because her mother made her feel that way. So she confided all of that to Leslie and she said the reason why she felt some type of way when Leslie pushed her away and made her feel some type of way about herself is because she already didn't have a mother at all. And Leslie was shocked to hear that, you know, April's mother wasn't there for her at all during the pregnancy. And um, Omaria feels like April should talk to her mother about the situation and try to mend fences with her. And I think that forgiveness is the key to every situation. If you really love somebody and you want to forgive them, then you would take the proper steps to forgive someone that you really, really love. So going into that, April talks to her mom and it doesn't start off right. Um, April's mother doesn't want to talk about um, a couple of things in the past, but April wants to talk about it. And it really frustrates April even more so because she wants to lay down the law and she wants to just make things work out between her and her mother. But her mother isn't going to allow that because she doesn't want to talk about certain situations that happened that made them be in the place that they're in. And I think that's really unfair to April because I do feel like she wants you know, a relationship with her mom, but her mom won't allow her to have that. So with that being said, um, I really do feel bad for April. You know, it's really sad when, you know, kids grow up without their parents and then they have this chip on their shoulder and then they have this big wall look when it comes down to their parents. But luckily with me and my father, my father wasn't really there for me for most of my life, but I had to grow up. And I wasn't really mature enough in, 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 in the whole business of forgiving somebody. I really wasn't mature enough to forgive my dad and have a logical conversation with my dad or my grandmother for that matter. But when I grew up and grew some balls and became a man, that's when I was able to do that. So it's going to take, you know, when a child feels abandoned by their parent, it takes them a while to get over that. So I really hope that April and her mother do get past that. Naya is obviously pregnant and she confides in Morgan about it and she's really afraid to tell Soldier Boy about it because she feels like he's not ready to have a kid of his own. And Morgan tells Naya to go ahead and tell Soldier Boy about the baby. Naya tries to tell Soldier Boy about the baby over FaceTime but it doesn't really work out because he got a whole lot of other shit going on on the other side of the world so he really didn't have the time to listen to anything that she had to say it turns out that Naya had a convenient miscarriage and she didn't hear from Soldier Boy at all she had to deal with it by herself poor thing you know but you know that's really sad for Naya and you know because it's so sad for Naya she needs to get her ass off the show okay so we get into um Youngberg and Masika and you know that Masika is as much as I can't stand Hazel Masika is a low down dirty thirsty ass bitch she a low down dirty bitch with some damn plastic in her lips she dirty and low down as a motherfucker she really is and I really can't believe that she don't think that what she doing is wrong she's singing a song in the studio and she sounds a horrid mess and her and Young Bird decide that they want to get back at Hazel by coming to the party together and be each other's date and just to get under her skin. That's some high school shit, but okay, whatever. And Young Bird is really being a bitch. So we get to the all-white party and, you know, he invites Hazel just to get under her skin. And Hazel comes to the party with Ray J. Masika gets on the stage and, you know, she shouts Tierra out, letting Hazel know that Tierra is there. And she basically lets everybody know that Young Bird was her fucking date. Letting Hazel know that as well. Making her, you know, basically to embarrass her. And to make matters worse, they played a record that they worked on in the studio only for Hazel to realize that it's the same record that Young Bird gave to her. So he basically fucked her, repossessed her record, and threw her out like yesterday's trash. That is sad. And it really kind of makes me feel bad for um, 
for, for Squidward. It really do make me feel bad for Squidward in a way because nobody deserves to be treated like that. And I know I said that fuck Hazel. I don't give a damn what Masika did to her. I honestly feel bad for Hazel, especially when she finally came to the realization that when Tia Marie was going in on her relationship with Young Bird, she was actually telling the truth. And for her to finally realize that and then to come to Tia and tell her that, that really made me feel bad for her. And because in, cause in that, at that moment, all she wanted was her friend by her side. And she realized that she didn't have a friend by her side anymore. And that was really sad to see. So in the midst of all of that drama going on at the all white party, Tierra and Fat Man Sincere decided that they're going to get into it. And Ray J took Tierra outside to apologize. Tierra tells Ray J that she moved on. I don't believe she moved on. Then the man in the moon, I don't believe it. And then she says that you're not happy. She pretty much tells Ray J that she knows him well enough to know that he's not really happy with the situation. And she knows about everything that's been going on between him and Princess. So Ray J um, pretty much says that the only reason why she knows this is because Morgan told her all the tea. So we get into Tierra and Sonya, which is Brandy and Ray J's mom. And honestly, Sonya gave Tierra some good ass advice. Even though Ray J was her son, she still kept it real with Tierra to let her know that she needs to put herself first and don't put no man before her. Despite the fact that that's her son. So I really do like the fact that, you know, Sonya kept it real with Tierra because she needed to hear that advice. You know what I'm saying? She needed somebody to give her some old woman wisdom like that. So it was nice to see Sonya on there. I didn't even expect to see Sonya on the show. We already seen Willie on the show. But I didn't expect to see Sonya on there and better, better yet talk to Tierra. So it's been nice to see that they still have a, some form of a bond and some form of a relationship for Sonya to give her that, that advice. Ray J confronts Morgan about telling people her um, his business about what's going on between him and Princess. Morgan went the fuck off on Ray J, honestly. He didn't have anything to say. All he could do was call her a bitch and call her a broke bitch and say that she ain't got no family. He knew she ain't had no family before he decided to hide her. And I thought that was a low blow because he already knows that she didn't, that she was adopted and didn't have nobody. And for him to throw that in her, in her face was really fucked up just because he's upset. Get mad at your bitch for telling Morgan out of y'all damn business. You know what I'm saying? So, all I gotta say is Morgan went the fuck in on Ray J. And he deserved every damn thing that she gave him. But that's all I really got to say about Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. All of my um, social media accounts are at the bottom. And I'm about to go and film my K. Michelle My Life video. And then it's time for bed. Because it's like 3, 4, 6 in the morning. And I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.